One of the cleanest city in the world. That's what the world sees us at least. But do you know how Singapore can be related to climate change, the hottest topic in the present time? Climate change, as we know it, is the drastic alteration of our environments over time due to various human activities. Global warming is one of the most prominent phenomena we experience today. The countries around the globe are all working to collectively to mitigate the impact of such potentially disastrous climate change. Hence, Kyoto Protocol, Copenhagen Climate Council. While the international organizations are busy in combating climate change, it would be a futile effort if we, as individuals, do not take immediate actions. As a rather low-lying, densely populated island, Singapore is particularly vulnerable to climate change. We rely largely on conventional fossil fuels, which are most cost competitive. Singapore's carbon emission, in particular, contributes to around 0.2 percent of the global total emission. Yet the number is high on per capita basis. Therefore, we also have the responsibility to do our part in fighting climate change. When the sunlight reaches the Earth, some of the heat is radiated back towards the space. The rest of them is absorbed by the Earth's surface, keeping the planet warm. However, greenhouse gas molecules absorb most of the outgoing heat and re-emit them in all directions, resulting in the overwarming of the surface of the Earth and the lower atmosphere. The main contribution to Singapore's greenhouse gas emissions is carbon dioxide from the use of energy to meet developments in human needs. On Earth, human activities are changing the natural greenhouse gas. Over the last century, burning of fossil fuels like coal and oil has increased the concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide. This happens because the coal and oil burning process combines carbon with oxygen in the air to make carbon dioxide. And everything, from furniture to computers, from clothes to carpets, all use energy when it is produced and transported, and these causes carbon emissions to be released. Even the various appliances you use every day consume electricity, which is also generated from fossil fuels, which can produce carbon dioxide and causes global warming. Higher temperatures cause the polar ice caps to melt, increasing the sea levels and threaten the low-lying areas. Global mean sea levels are projected to rise by over 50 centimeters by around 2,800. In the Singapore Trace, tide gauge data shows that the mean sea levels has increased by about 3 millimeters per year over the last 15 to 17 years. A sea level rise of up to 15 centimeters can result in severe coastal erosion and land loss in Singapore, particularly as it has very relatively flat coastline. The higher average temperature may also cause more frequent and intense rainfalls. Higher sea level will make it more difficult for the rainwater to drain into the sea. This can aggravate inland flooding during storm surges and rainstorms. The Archer Road flash floods in the recent years were some of the proofs. Since the 1970s, Singapore has experienced an average warming rate of 0.25 Celsius degrees per decade. Higher annual temperatures may also mean more frequent and more severe episodes of warm weather, leading to increased occurrences of heat stress and discomfort, particularly among the elderly, the sick, and those without access to air conditioning. Warmer temperatures due to both climate change as well as the urban heat island effect may lead to greater use of air conditioning and increase the Singapore's energy demand. This is a vicious cycle. When you leave the room, instead of leaving the fan, the aircon on, turn them off in order to reduce the energy consumption. Turn the aircon to 25 Celsius degrees, which is the most efficient. Instead of throwing all the trash into one bin, separate all of them so it's easier to recycle. Transportation takes up a huge portion of the total carbon emission in Singapore. That's around 20% of it. In order to help reduce the emission, try to minimize the use of private cars and use public transport instead.